Good afternoon, I am Lieutenant Heinze of 13S, stationed at One Sops under Delta 9, and today we'll be doing a demo of the Genesis Crew Scheduling software. So starting off, we'll be taking a look at what the original process that One Sops was using to try and keep track of their personnel. Right now they're using an Excel spreadsheet, and their data formatting is very complicated to take a look at and discern who is available for any given position on any given day. Displayed here, we can see the first person at the top of the list is on a mid-shift, day shift, four days on, four days off cycle, and then they've taken leave across this period here. To try and figure out who is available to fill in on their leave schedule, they'll have to cross-reference this Excel spreadsheet to find that member, and then also cross-reference this PowerPoint that they're using to determine who is in what training course to figure out who is available. Currently, this takes a member several hours to figure out who is available on a given day to fill in that position. So with Genesis, we've built it up such that all the data is stored in a database. Uh, we've broken it down into six components, the course types, the positions, the members, the training courses, the shift cycles, and ultimately building up into the force package. If we take a look into the course types, this is how the database knows what member has completed a course because you might have many of the same course types scheduled across a year. A course type is simply given a name inside of the database. Any unit will then need to have positions assigned. So if we take a look at our positions view here, we can go in and add a new position. A position can either be a standalone and have a prerequisite course tied to it, or you can have a position that is a subset of other prerequisite positions. In one SOPS case, this is the crew commander must be qualified as a mission planner and a deputy crew commander, and there is no associated crew commander course for that position. When you build up a member, you can take a look at the members overview page, which gives you a breakdown of who is qualified in what position based off of either their administrative awarding of that position qualification or based on a database's understanding of the training pipeline to be qualified in that given position. We can take a look at how a new member is added, and here we can just give them their unique DOD ID number, first name, last name, who their supervisor might be, and then administra administratively apply the qualifications as necessary for that member. Training courses are just built up of a start date and an end date, and then you associate them with a particular training type from the previous list established in the database, and then you set up what their prerequisite course is such that you can build in the domino effect such that if a member is removed from a prerequisite course, the system can then filter through and remove them from any future courses that use that course as a prerequisite. If we switch over to thinking about shift cycles now, which is a core component of a force package, we can add in a shift cycle and it is dynamic enough to put together any shift cycle that you might be able to think of just by adding in days on and days off to build up whatever your unit might be using for a shift cycle. A force package is a collection of personnel and material necessary to accomplish a mission. In this case, OneSOPS is flying satellites. So if we build up a force package, it will have a start date and end date, and you, you can build up positions for each crew and determine the quantity as necessary for each shift. And then for each crew, you give it a unique name and then assign it one of those shift cycles that we had just previously built up and select the cycle start date to then build a force package. If we take a look at a force package, you have a red light, green light status for each day, which shows manning in inside of each crew and then each position. So if we zoom into the day view here, we can see we have personnel assigned in each slot here, so if we take somebody out, you have an immediate feedback to see the red light, green light status and know that crew alpha is missing a crew commander. So if we go in and assign specialist hall here, we can see that our force package now shows green for the entirety of its duration. If we switch over and take a look at the training course dashboard, we can see that specialist hall has been assigned into all the prerequisite training courses necessary to qualify her for a crew commander. 
And if we switch over to the member schedule dashboard, we can get an at a glance view and see that Specialist Hall in the blue color here has gone through all the prerequisite courses and then will be assigned to the force package. So if we go in and remove her from the primary prerequisite course, the system has removed her from all of the supplemental courses that utilize that course as a prerequisite and then also has removed the member from the force package because the system understands that she would no longer be qualified in that case. So in this particular example, she was unable to meet the original ODIN class, so we can very quickly then go back through and build up her training pipeline for the next cycle in those courses. As I said earlier, this process would normally take a person several hours to go through each of their Excel spreadsheets and PowerPoints to try and figure out where their availability was to be able to even schedule them for the courses as we go along. So once we have specialists all built back through her training course, we can then go back to the force package and the system should now know that Specialist Hall is now qualified as a crew commander again and then we can assign her back into the shift to give us a green light status for the force package. One of the other features about the member schedule is you can go through here and do a preliminary leave request outside of leave web uh, so that way you can project leave dates further out than 30 days in advance. Um, the system also has permissions built in, either a basic user, supervisor, administrator, or shift scheduler. Once a leave request is pending, you can then take a look at the leave request dashboard, and if you are marked as a supervisor, you can then approve it, and then if you're marked as a scheduler, you'll be able to also approve that, and then it will show as approved on the schedule. One of the nice features about the force package is once you are fully assigned in each position, you can go back and click on a day and it will show you what other personnel are available such that when you're trying to schedule leave, you know who to go and talk to to try to cover your shift for that given day. This has been a demo of the Genesis Crew Scheduler software. I hope this saves you and your unit a lot of time and I look forward to having you on our team.